Hey everybody. Okay, uh, this week, this week, well, it's the end of the week, I guess. We're starting about a week of studying ODEs, or uh, ordinary differential equations. Yeah, the, um, the end of this course, the rest of this course, after we've done like multivariable calculus stuff, um, is all like a survey of like, what, three other topics? We're starting a survey of like ODEs, um, that'll be a week, and some probability, that'll be a week, and sequences series, and that'll be a week, if that's enough weeks. Otherwise, we'll spread that out a little bit. Um, but yeah, differential equations today. So, what's a differential equation? So, when when mathy, physicsy people say the phrase, you might have heard this before, mathematics is the language of the universe. Okay, so uh, uh, brushing aside like like how cringy that is, like uh, it's kind of right. Um, but when they're saying that, what they're thinking of is differential equations because what these things end up being super useful for is like modeling real world situations. So, like if you have I mean, any any sort of like real world system like things are moving around or dilating or having higher quantities with respect to time um, and you want to write down equations about how all these things are related those equations are differential equations um, you're going to see in like a for you early examples how what you've been doing in integral and differential calculus is like it can be thought of as like rudimentary rudimentary, uh, rudimentary differential equations uh because like you know your whole like oh hey if you have a car that has this velocity but it starts over here you know that you write down an equation that models that that's technically a differential equation but then uh, stuff gets a lot more sophisticated with that with a lot more derivatives floating around either way these things are super useful for modeling uh, if you're a physicist or engineer these will end up being your bread and butter yay uh, so, but yeah let's get started right now um, a differential equation differential equation differential equation I will very often get lazy and just denote this a DE um, this is an equation that relates a function to its derivatives derivatives of various kinds. So, what do I mean by that? So let's uh, let's orient ourselves with some notation first. So first of all, uh, t t for time. T is typically our independent variable, right? This is an independent variable. Independent variable. Um, and then if you regard like a function of t, you usually set a dependent variable equal to the function of t. So if like you're looking at f of t f of t, um, you let this f of t equal y, where y is your dependent variable. Depend, dependent, cat spelling is so difficult. Um, okay, so here's what we're gonna do, um, is that y, we're just gonna think of y, in order, we're gonna make notation easier, we're just gonna think of y as the function. So, none of this, yes this, this is beautiful. We'll even write this sometimes as y of t like really ham it up as a function notation, right? So then, uh, moving on, the way we've like learned to denote derivatives then is, well, okay, there's the long form way, right? dy dt, that's the derivative of y. But because we're only dealing with one independent variable here, t, it's pretty clear if we write y prime. And now since we're talking about differential equations, we're gonna introduce even one more notation for this, the thing that I think the physicists invented, y dot. Right. These are all just notation for the same exact thing, right? Um, and then, and then you will be surprised to learn that uh, for the second derivative, you're going to put two dots there. All right? Big surprise. Okay. But anyways, uh, with this new notation introduced, what are some examples of differential equation? Examples. Um, yeah. Just write down some rudimentary examples. So like ty dot plus y double dot minus 1 over, I guess, y y double dot equals 3. That's an example of a differential equation, right? It's a function that relates itself to its derivatives. It's an equation that relates a function to its derivatives. Your equation, your, yeah, your original like function is y, and it's related to its second derivative, and its first derivative, and its second derivative, like in this way. There's some physical situation this thing might be modeling. Who knows what? I just made this off the top of my head. Uh, but you can see this is 
more complicated than anything we've really dealt with so far, right? Um, and then, of course, we can get a little bit hairier than that, too, right? Let's go with, you know, you got t squared, y prime all squared. That's why the dot notation is kind of nice, because then this square doesn't mess up with your with your tick marks. Um, equals, like, g of t plus y double dot or something. Where, I mean, g of t is now just shorthand for, like, a bunch of stuff with t in it, but, like, no y's, right? There's just, just a bunch of t's here. Nothing else happening, right? Um... Here's the birth, the quick example you've seen before, right? Um, just y prime equals stuff with t, right? This brisk example. I even like put down something exact with t, even you know three t squared plus five, right? Because what's this saying? This is language you've seen before. You know how to kind of answer this. This is saying like oh dy dt is equal to three t squared plus five, and if you want to ask yourself what t like y is. You could just take the integral of both sides of this thing, right? This is the antiderivative of dy dt dt. Take the integral of both sides with respect to t. And this left-hand side is literally just y. y is equal to this antiderivative. Right? Yeah, look at that. We just solved our very first differential equation, this differential equation. Again, secretly, all of integral calc has been solving this differential equation right here for various functions g of t. Um, but okay, um, let's, let, me, let, me, let me put down like one more horrific example. Uh, what if you have some function, and we'll call it like p, yeah, no, it's just stick with y. Sometimes your function's p because a lot of the things you model is population, you know, p of t, but I won't use that now. Um, I was going to do something like, what about the second derivative of y with respect to t, but then also with respect to mu, and that's, you subtract from that. The first derivative of y with respect to mu, but then add to that 2t copies of dy dt, that second derivative, and say that equals zero. Now this is horrendous because I've introduced a new variable mu. Uh, if you haven't seen it, this is... Uh, pronounced mu, 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 it might be mu, I don't know, it's Greek. This is the Greek analog of M. This is the Greek M. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, this is also a differential equation, right? You have a function y, it's a function of two parameters, t and mu, and this differential equation relates that y to its derivatives of various variables. Okay? Okay. Let's talk about some like other language. I think the rest of this video is going to be just introducing language, int introducing vocabulary. So first thing, uh, let's talk about, I think I already dropped this phrase, ordinary differential equations. Let's be chill. I'm going to try and write all my vocab in yellow. Ordinary. Or, or let, okay, for slow, let's spell it right. <laughs> ordinary differential equations. Um, and this is often just shortened to ODEs. Right? Ordinary differential equations are differential equations of a single variable. So what I mean is ordinary differ differential equations, it's all this stuff we did here. So I mean, just I'll just circle the examples. These three, these are ordinary differential equations just because there's a single variable t floating around. Okay? Now I say that into contrast with partial differential equations. Uh, these are shorthanded to PDEs. Um, and that partial is the same partial as the word partial when you say you're taking partial derivatives. Huh. Partial differential equations involve multiple... Now, let's be, let's be precise here. Multiple independent variables. Multiple independent variables. So in this case, it was like mu and t. This is a PDE, right? So for the sake of this class, uh, we're only studying ODEs. For this week, we're studying ODEs. When you take your very first differential equations class, very likely you will only see ODEs. Uh, it's because these are you know slightly easier to deal with than PDEs. But I mean, when you're dealing with real world stuff, there's usually multiple parameters floating around. Another name for variables is parameters. Um, so I mean, PDEs are more useful for studying life, but we're not there yet. Baby steps. Happy P-O-D-E's. Okay. 
Yeah, we're just going to focus on ODEs. So what's a solution to a differential equation? Next key thing, a solution to a differential equation is a continuous function that satisfies that differential equation. on some interval, on some domain, right? Again, when you're modeling real world situations, you do need to think about your domain you're talking about, right? So I mean, oh, if you're dealing with time as your independent variable, then you probably like have like start at time equals zero and you're trying to predict what happened in the future. So your model only deals with like positive real numbers that's domain. Or sometimes your differential equation has like all real numbers in its domain and you can only find like solutions on certain pieces of it depending on what your equation is. Anyway though, I'll give you an example right now of what I'm talking about. So this equation, uh, y is equal to the natural log of x is a solution. It's a solution to the differential equation xy double prime plus y prime equals zero. Usually they say dot. Um, and it's a solution on the interval from zero to infinity, right? The reason it's only a solution on that domain is because you know the domain of natural log is only for positive reals. Um, but yeah, it's a solution because it satisfies this equation. So what does that mean? That means we can literally take derivatives of this thing and plug it in and check it, right? So if y equals the natural log of x, let's do, let's do our homework in green. If y is equal to the natural log of x, uh, that implies that y prime, or y dot, is equal to 1 over x. And that's going to imply that y double dot is equal to negative 1 over x squared. And then we go ahead and punch that in and check it. Do -do 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 -do. Is, is x times negative 1 over x squared plus 1 over x, is that equal to 0? Hell yeah, it is. That's why natural log of x is a solution to this differential equation, is because it satisfies it like that. Neato, neato, neato. So note, I said here, a solution. There are other solutions. There are multiple solutions to a given differential equation, right? Uh, well, hand this black. Um, y equals five times the natural log of x is a solution too. How do you see that? Well, if you actually just put a 5 everywhere, it just kind of floats around. Like, if you take this 5, I didn't leave much room. You stick that 5 there, you take the derivative, that 5 hangs out. You take the derivative, that 5 hangs out. And that 5 just goes in here, both of those places. It still zeroes out, so that's why you can see it's a solution, too. Um, the idea is, yeah, a differential equation usually has infinitely many solutions, depending on, like, certain parameters. Uh, this is very analogous to, like, when you're taking integrals. Like, when you're taking integrals, you have to add that plus c on the end, because, you know, a function has a whole bunch of antiderivatives, a whole family of them, depending on what that constant c is. This is exactly the same as that, where you're going to get some constants around that dictate a whole family of solutions to a differential equation. So, let's write down some more terminology here a general solution to a differential equation is, well, I'm going to call it a formula, is a formula for every solution to that differential equation. What's better than an explanation, ex than an example? Um, I can write down the general solution to the one before. So y being equal to c1 times the natural log of x plus c2 is the general solution. Is the general solution to our good friend differential equation from before, xy double dot plus y dot is equal to zero. And we could check this manually if we wanted to. Again, the C1 and C2, these are just constants. 
when you take derivatives, that c2 immediately goes away. But that c1, as we kind of saw with the example of the 5 up above, can be anything. Right? So that's your general solution. And this captures every solution. Right? That's a little bit harder to prove or convince yourself, but uh, the idea is that every solution to that differential equation has this form. Okay? Now one more piece of terminology. Um, like just again, this is analogous to analogous to when you're like uh, doing a definite integral. Like a definite integral is kind of like an initial condition sort of thing, right? Like it's not only like oh, give me a function for like how much distance the car has accumulated in general, right? It's like give me a function for how much, or just give me how much distance the car has accumulated from t equals zero to t equals five hours or something like that. You have some initial conditions. You have some initial parameters where you want like kind of a numerical answer to a thing, right? Same idea here is like this is a general solution to a differential equation, but if you want a particular solution to that equation, you have to supply some initial conditions. And you can plug it in and find like an exact, actual, honest solution to the differential equation. So there's the terminology in there. I kind of peppered it in there, but let's go ahead and write it down. A particular solution. is a specific, I mean, I'm just using a synonym for the word particular. It's a specific solution to a DE, to a differential equation. So it's got no, like, well, the C's are like actual constants. I'm not going to write that. Um, but in order to find a particular solution, you need to be given some initial conditions. Right. So let me go ahead and write down like an example question of this, right? Because this is a question you'll probably see quite a bit of in your life, uh, continuing taking math classes. Um, what is the particular solution to, you know, good old y double dot plus y dot is equal to zero, uh, given that y evaluated 1 is equal to 3 and y evaluated e is equal to 5 question mark okay All right this gives you some initial conditions that you're working with initial conditions that you're working with and allow you to find a particular solution this allows you to find some actual values of c that get put in there um, first, I got one last bit of terminology. This sort of question here, this sort of question here, uh, is often called an initial value problem. Initial value problem. Um, I got often, often shortened to uh, IVT. I see where those quotes. Yellow means quotes. Um, or sometimes, I think in older books or book titles, I'll often see this thing called a boundary value problem. But anyways, let's go ahead and like actually solve this thing. I'm going to do our homework in green. So we know the general solution to that thing, right? The general solution to this was that y equals c1 times the natural log of x plus c2. Right, right. Um, but the idea is like we can use those initial conditions in order to get two equations out of this thing. So first equation here, that thing tells us that if we punch in 1, a 3 pops out. If we punch in 1, a 3 pops out. The second equation tells us that if we punch in E, a 5 pops out. If we punch in E, a 5 pops out. And now we have two equations with two unknowns, right? There's no coincidence here that... I'll, I'll say that later because that's actually super helpful, so I'll say it all at one time. But yeah, we can just find the particular solution now by solving these unknowns, which, which turns out to be really chill because the natural log of zero, the natural log of one is zero, and the natural log of e is one. So these two equations become three equals c two, and five equals c one plus c two, which then gives us an answer real quick that the initial problem the initial solution we're looking for is that y equals 
uh, it's going to be 2 times the natural log of x plus 3. All right? This is the particular solution the question was asking for. The particular solution is y equals 2 natural log of x plus 3. All right, that one last useful thing I was going to say is just something to note. Uh, how far do I need to scroll away? This far. Um, yeah, note that. Make these dots sincere. Note that there is, oh, what color should I use? Let's use black and let's make it really, really, really big. Note that we have two initial conditions. All right. And we get two equations here. And that our general solution had two C's in it. And that the top degree in our differential equation was two, right? There's two dots on there. That is no coincidence. Um, that gives you an idea of like, how many like uh, initial conditions you need in order to solve a p particular solution to a differential equation. Um, this number here, this number here, let's write this smaller, uh, is called the degree. of the differential equation, right? It's, it's the highest number of, highest, highest derivative that appears. Yeah, the num, the, mm, I don't know the right word there. If you have a second derivative there, the degree is two. If you only had a first derivative, the degree would be one, you know. Um, but yeah, that degree tells you how many parameters are gonna be in the general solution, and it tells you how many initial conditions you need to get, like actually fill in the blanks for all those parameters. Okay, um, I think that is enough that's enough terminology in one video. Yeah, so that was, that was a grand little introduction. Um, in the coming videos, in your coming work, basically what you'll be doing is solving some very basic ODEs. Uh, because that's usually, oh, excuse me, that's the subject matter of the first course. is like, hey, here's an ODE, solve it. Oh, here's an ODE, solve it. Um, you'll learn a few techniques for solving some basic, excuse me, solving some basic examples of ODEs. Um, which is going to feel like probably the beginning of when you started integral calculus too. Like, oh, here's an integral, take it. Here's here's a function, take its antiderivative. And you'll learn a few techniques for a few special patterns, um, and then we'll talk about some applications. But I mean, this is this is the beginning. This is the beginning of your journey into differential equation study. Yeah, hope this video was good and useful. Uh, I mostly just throw words at you, which is um, atypical for math class. I promise I won't do that very often. Okay. Right, cool.